<laughs> special darkness video today because I'm driving at night. <laughs> so, um, for this one, I want to talk a little bit about the, um, uh, wow, it's really fucking dark. Holy shit. Um, I'm going to leave this on for now. Um, so, basically, what I want to talk about now, uh, today, the we're gearing up to start a game. It's going to be set in uh, 40K. And we, one of, one of the group found a... Um, basically a, a hack of 5e you don't see i feel like you don't see hacks as much anymore like a, something you used to see a lot um i know uh dungeon craft the dude that runs that professor dungeon master really wish i could have seen him when he come to came to philly at wizard world or whatever convention he was at but not the point um so you know you don't see hacks as much anymore like, there used to be tons of those. I think technically D&D started as a hack of chainmail, right? That, I mean, don't quote me on that. I don't, I'm no expert on this topic. But, uh, yeah, we found a, a hack of 5e to set in Warhammer 40k. Um, it's a pretty solid hack. It does some cool stuff. I really like it. what it did for a ranger. Um, it remixed a bunch of classes, like, um, it... it fused wizard and sorcerer um it gave warlock normal spell progression um there's no cleric at all but it did take one or two cleric things and one or two bard things and it folded them into this new class called the crusader which is basically fourth edition warlord kind of it's not exactly but it it is like close enough <laughs> um, so it did some cool stuff there, and and that's it's just like general good, uh, cool game design. Um, and but I think overall the hack does a good job. But I'm not really here to talk about the hack as much as I could. Um, one of the things that got me thinking about it is like you know it mostly uses all the same damage types as Five E as D and D Five E, and. That gets kind of weird, doesn't it? If you really start to think about it. Because in the, like, you know, you can make not a knee-jerk reaction to a lot of things, but, like, first, damage types. Okay, the, the one thing it does do is flatten all, it flattens bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing into just kinetic. So it's just physical damage. Um, it does that. All the other damage type it seems to keep around. You know, fire, cold, lightning, thunder, poison, acid, uh, radiant, necrotic, psychic, force. It keeps all those. I'm pretty sure. I haven't looked through, like, the spell list and stuff super extensively. And there's no monster manual. And so you're forced to, you know, homebrew some shit. Or just reskin 5e monsters, which is fine. But... That's also kind of what I want to dig into. Um, so, if you're, you know, it does have some implications because, like, 40k does have demons, but they're not the same kind of thing as, like, a D&D demon or a fiend or devil or whatever. And 40k doesn't, or this, I'll just, when I say... I'll just say the 40k hack. Uh, the 40k hack doesn't have celestials. It does have undead, which I never really read up too much about undead in 40k. I, I, are there undead? Like, I, wait, what is that? Are those just... Is that Necrons? It's not Necrons. Necrons are made of fancy nano metal, But, you know. Um, so, some of the things I was thinking about is how do these damage types interact with the different um, factions, Xenos, monsters, whatever you want to call them, that are in the 40k setting. Like, for example, psychic damage. How does that interact with every non-human race? Like, 
you know, there's a variety of other uh, species, namely the Eldar, the Orcs, the Tyranids, and basically everything from the warp. All demons, all Chaos Marines, all that bullshit. Like, all of those things, would they have resistance to psychic damage? Just as a blanket feature? Like, if a race is, like, psychically inclined, would they... Or do they have, like, any kind of inbuilt resistance to those types of things? Um, the only one I can say for sure, or I could, like, see much stronger arguments for, are the Tyranids and Demons. Demons partially because, you know, they're of the work. They're not physical beings. They're not actually there. Even though you have flesh, you can hit them with a sword. Uh, but it's not real flesh. It's immaterial flesh, you know, it goes away when you kill them, it's held together by belief, I guess, um, not quite, so, because they're, those creatures are of the warp, and the warp is all psychic stuff, would they automatically just have blanket psychic resistance, or, because they're psychic warp immaterial creatures, but they have vulnerability to psychic damage. Is that the only way to like really easily hurt them? And if so, that could be interesting, especially if there's not a lot of sources of pure psychic damage. Even uh, even everything I've seen in like you know the spells and stuff that uh, all the classes have, they use um, psychic abilities to do other kinds of damage. Like, the, uh, the Paladin equivalent has what is basically a channel divinity called Warp Flame, which does necrotic or radiant damage, your choice. Doesn't do psychic damage. Um, so I don't even know if there is psychic damage. I gotta look through it. But, if there is, would that be the best way to attack demons? I don't know, I'm not that well versed in 40k to make that kind of call, but what I could definitely say, see, have resistance to psychic damage would be the Tyranids, because they've got the whole shadow and the warp thing, so maybe normally Tyranids don't have um, resistance to psychic damage, but if there's like a sufficient number of synapse creatures around, or if there's a particular kind of synapse, synapse creature, like the zoanthropes, the neurothropes, any 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 throat, I think. I think all the throats are like that. But maybe those creatures could induce some kind of uh, psychic resistance. Something like that makes sense to me. Um, but but then if you get rid of those synaptic sy uh, synapse creatures you get rid of psychic resistance, which is just a cool mechanic. Um, but, jumping back to demons, because they're not physical, do all types of physical damage, I think, unless they're blessed weapons or whatever, there's, like, I've seen some talk about, like, weapons can be blessed. Like, what are they blessed by? There's no gods. Like, what? what? Um, are they just blessed by the emperor? I mean, like, emperor like, wipes a sword between his ass cheeks and now it's good at killing demons. Um, like, you know, but, like, that's a thing, I guess. I, I read it's a thing somewhere. But, so, like, would demons just be more resistant to physical things, i.e. any kind of weapons? Like, just kinetic damage. Physical damage. But would it also be would they also be resistant to the, um, the, what we usually call elemental damage, but, like, you know, the other physical damage, like, things like fire, fire, cold, lightning, thunder, poison, acid, those damage types, in this case, are, quote, real damage types, they're not of the warp, so they're more physical in that way, because you've got, or they're more, or they're real, However you want to call it. Okay, there's lots of streetlights now. So I'll turn that off. But, like, so, 
would demons just be resistant to every physical or real type? So, like, they're just more vulnerable to, like, force... Not vulnerable, but, like, they take normal damage from force, radiant, necrotic, psychic... Maybe thunder, but... No, not thunder. Like, is that how it works? I don't know. It's it's kind of... This video is more, like, just a kind of food for thought type of thing. More than anything else. So... Like, it's, it's really kind of those two. Because the other Xenos, like, orcs. I could see an argument for them having psychic resistance. But... They don't, like, you know, they don't have, they don't seem to have any kind of, like, special resistance to being, like, mind-controlled or, you know, having their, having their brain attacked directly, I guess, whatever you qu quantitate as, uh, as psychic damage, but that works, man, I'm, you know, they, they get whatever damage resistance they think they should have, really, um, but for Eldar, I could definitely see that being a case. Not just because, like, they're they're all psychically inclined, but because they have that kind of... Maybe because of their culture, too, from what little I understand of Eldar culture. But, you know. And then do all human psychers just gain psychic resistance? I don't think so. I don't think so, but... I think these are these are interesting questions, uh, and especially when you're when you're adapting a system to fit some other setting. There's going to be quirks of the system that you kind of have to deal with in this way. And also, this does tie into another video I want to do, talking about like systems themselves, um, and how at the end of the day, systems don't matter really. Like, I forget, I, I had a thought the other day that I, that I wanted to base that concept around, but it's like, it kind of boils down to like, you know, all the noodly, like little fiddly bits in a ton of systems that lots of people care about. And it's like, okay, you know, like, oh, this system, it uses advantage or it uses like, you know, these incremental plus ones that you can stack up. It's like, all that really means is you can get conditional things that makes your roles more likely to succeed. And there's gradients, and, you know, sometimes it's really, like, really potent. Sometimes it's not. It kind of doesn't matter all that much. Because they do the same thing. But, it's a big but, um, they're not, like when you really boil them down, they're not all that different. Like, it's a player rolls a die to determine if something happens or if something they try succeeds, more or less. That's like, that's like the basic rule of any system and then there's just lots of ways to do that. Like, you know, there's tons of other reasons to use one system or, not, or another, but if, if a system generally works okay, it's okay. You just change what you don't like and keep it keep it pushing. If you know if something comes up, but if the system otherwise works for you, it's fine. But again, that's a topic for another video. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to say on the 40k hack for now. Um, when we get closer to actually starting that game, or when we actually start the game, I'll probably have more to say.